this this week actually what we'll be going over is uh, primarily rendering. Um, we'll also be talking about materials, uh, which determine how something looks like. Um, and we'll um, on Thursday we'll be going through some walkthroughs and how you develop walkthroughs. So that's uh, an overview of what we'll be doing this week. Um, so today, primarily what we'll focus on is materials. What does it mean to assign a material to an element? Um, um, and how do you do it as well? And uh, rendering, specifically um, external or exterior renderings. <clears throat> so uh, first I'd like to uh, talk a little about what, what, a, what does a material define? So a material defines a color that um, an element displays when you have a shaded uh, project view. So um, under the view, <clears throat> view control bar, uh, if you open that up, you have a few choices here. So shading and shading with edges, those are the two, view, uh, two views that you'll be able to see the colors um, of your actual model. <clears throat> so let's see. So let me, let me step back just a little bit here and um, kind of describe what we're looking at as far as this medical lab is. Um, this is an actual uh, project that was designed, unfortunately it wasn't built um, in, in San Jose. It's a lab space um, and it's, I believe it's a lab space for t tissue sampling or, or prep to go to, to another lab. Um, but basically you have, on the first floor, you have uh, some <clears throat> some lab space, which is located right here. You have some conference room, and some waiting room offices up in this area. And then on the second floor, what you have is uh, the, main, the main office uh, for the owner, as, as well as a space for uh, like an employee lobby space. And then you've got your circular stairs. So just to give you an idea of what we're working in today. Uh, I definitely like the 3D default, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the, towards that view. And just uh, um, to get you primed and ready for renderings, um, I'm going to go ahead and just do one quick rendering um, just to sh get, get, the, uh, get the idea going of, of how renderings actually work. Okay. <clears throat> so Glenn was kind enough to have uh, many 3D views, so I'm just going to try to use those for the meantime. Um, here's a nice view. So uh, to render, again, we, um, this is called uh, the view control bar. You have a, a rendering tool. It looks like a teapot. Um, not sure why it looks like a teapot, but if anyone can figure that out, please let me know. Um, and so here's our rendering dialog. Um, at this point, we can as easily go ahead and press render, and you can get some nice images coming out. Um, but I would caution of using a quality that's this high to begin with. Um, typically, for renders, what, what it is is somewhat of an iterative, in, iterative process where um, you first do a very low quality rendering just to see if everything looks correct. All your materials uh, are looking somewhat like they should, if the lighting is correct, um, and then you can start ramping up on the quality. Um, the reason why you want to do that is if I were to hit, and I'm, I'm just going to do this for now, if I were to hit render um, at a higher quality, you can see, uh, well, any, any quality, the first few seconds it's going to say zero, but then um, at that point it'll start counting down. Um, but the, uh, the higher the quality, the, the longer it takes to compute these things. So um, the idea is to try to, um, is to go small initially and then work your way up to the, to, uh, the nicer renderings. Um, something that's really interesting here is you can actually see uh, the uncompressed image size, and uh, that can give you an idea of, of how long it's going to take to render. Um, also, just a uh, you know, quick rules of thumb, every time you go one level up on quality, it's going to take about twice as much to render. Um, you, know, you can get to a render that takes a very, very long time. Typically, if you use some of the higher settings, you're talking 30 minutes. So the idea is when you, when you get to that point and you're ready to do a very nice render, um, um, go ahead, set it up for the render, hit render, go have a cup of coffee because you can't work um, in Revit while it's rendering. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to cancel this because it's taking too long. Um, actually, before I do that, I can kind of explain to, um, what, what Revit is doing when it's rendering. 
Um, right now, it's taking the first pass in the render. Um, and the first thing it does is it says, all right, where's the sun? Where's my uh, uh, sources of light? Where, where's that located? We've actually defined a little bit of it here, but um, I'll, let, I'll leave that for uh, discussion for later in this uh, lecture. Um, once, it does, once it does that, it goes to the surface and says, okay, how light should the surface be? That's determined by the material property. Also, the colors of that um, is determined. Um, and then, you know, it does a bunch of complications on uh, how reflective it should be, and, and, um, and you get your nice image. So right now, you can see it going through a second run, uh, and it's starting to get nicer and nicer. But uh, I'm going to cancel this out because, um, again, I, I tried it on the high the high one, the high uh, setting, and we don't really need that at this point. <clears throat> okay, so now that I gave you a little bit of taste of rendering, um, really what determines how an element looks is what material you set for that element. So uh, we'll start going a little bit into that. So, uh, materials, uh, to determine what um, an instance, um, how its material is assigned, is kind of tricky. There's, um, you have to do a little bit of investigating to in, order, in order to determine it, to determine where it's assigned. Um, so, just to, give you an, um, just to give you a breakdown of how it really works is um, there's, a hi there's a hierarchy. It starts with object styles, uh, specifically a category, then subcategory, then it go moves down to uh, type properties, instant properties, and paint tools. So uh, a specific instance will take um, the lowest of whatever you define. So if you have a paint tool on something, it's not even going to worry about what's going on above it. Um, and same thing with the type properties. If you have, if you've changed um, a specific element, type properties for its material, then it's not going to worry about what the category is. Okay. Um, Again, it'll it'll move up until the top one, and then from that top one, it'll you know. If, and also, just so you know, um, most object styles aren't even um, there's no materials associated with them, so that's why most of the things that you drop into Revit um, are gray. So uh, if you see a gray object, it's because there's no material associated with that object or the category or subcategory. So it's, it it really is just looking around and trying to find. You know, for example, you got this this uh, wood panel right here. These shelves are a specific color, and you got to kind of investigate on why it's looking like that in, in order to determine how to change it. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, look at the object styles and start there, start high, and move down low. Uh, so to get to object object styles, you go to the Manage tab. And then under settings, you'll see you'll see object styles. Easy enough. So here's our object styles dialog box. On the on the left side, you have categories. On the on the very right, you'll have materials. So this is where you actually assign materials to your categories. If I go ahead and look at um, uh, a specific category, I can open it up, and you can see that you have subcategories as well. And uh, some of these subcategories have materials assigned to them, some of them don't. Again, the ones that don't are going to look gray. Um, if they actually have a material assigned to it, then it's going to take the the, um, the uh, the colors um, of, of that material that you assign to it, and the, and the rendering properties as well. So, uh, so in order, let's see, so I'm going to close out of this and kind of demonstrate of what that actually means. I'm going to go to my default 3D view, kind of zoom in. All right, and right now you can see that my railings for, you know, I have, I have, um, different types of railings here. I have this railing, which is kind of curved. I have this one up here. This actually is a different type of railing because um, um, you can see it only has, you know, one, two, three, um, I don't know, what, what do you call it? horizontal rails associated with it. So these are different types of railings. However, um, if I were to change the category property for railings, then all of these should go ahead and, and, and change the appearance of them as well. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So we go manage settings, ob object styles, 
railings, and one of the categories should be railings. It is. Um, right now, it's being defined as, as um, a material called metal railing. So let's go ahead and open this up. What I just opened here is a materials dialog box. Um, there's multiple ways to get to this materials dialog box. This is just one of them. Um, but we'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the easier ways to get to it as well, but uh, just, so, just so you understand that. Okay. So at this point, I can choose um, any material that I want. The materials are shown right now on the left-hand side of this dialog box. Uh, on the right-hand side of this dialog box are um, specific parameters associated with that material or the name of that material. So um, just to let you know how to navigate through here, um, we have the material class. Right now it's set to all. If you want to search for a specific, uh, um, under a specific uh, class, you can do that. For example, if you know you only want to look at paint, right? So you can select that and, and you might be able to find something there. Or let's say, let's say stone, okay? So there, this is a way to, to filter out some, some, some of the things that you know you don't want or, or specifically that you do want. Okay. Um, all right. So just just so you guys know, we're still editing the materials for the railings. But what I'm going to do is just kind of explain a little bit about this, before, um, just so um, it makes a little bit more sense to you guys. Uh, another way of looking at this list is by small thumbs. Um, so as you can see here, you know you've got colors associated with all these materials. Um, the colors that we were seeing are what is visible in the shading view, which is right here. It's not what it would render as. So um, it, it's a little bit different. So just so you, and we'll explain that as well. Um, you can also create new materials. Um, typically, what you do is just find the nearest one that you, you know you want. Say, for example, you're looking at wood, and um, and actually, we'll, we'll go through an example of how to create a material. But um, this is this is how you duplicate one. You can rename the material. You can delete a material as well. Okay. Uh, the first tab on the right hand side is graphics, and that really determines how your element is going to look in the shaded. Uh, views. Then you have render appearance. Uh, pretty obvious. This is going to be what it renders as. <clears throat> uh, we won't really deal with identity and, and uh, physical. Um, I can really quickly tell you something about identity. When when you're searching uh, in this box, um, like for example, if I want if I wrote car carpet, it will bring up whatever material that was associated with. So. So, for example, if you had, you know, if you created a material and the name, the, you have the name for the material, but you also want to associate it with, with another name, so when you're searching for it, um, that's that's the place that you can actually put that in, and it'll it'll work. Um, also, uh, real quickly, materials are similar to components, so you can tra if you've created a bunch of uh, unique materials and you want to keep them, then you can transfer them um, uh, the same way that you transfer components that, that we talked about in earlier lectures. Okay, so a little bit of digression there. So, okay, so now we have our railings. Um, I want to go ahead and change that to a different color. Um, right now it's saying use render appearance, and what that means is it's going to go back to the render appearance and produce uh, the closest color associated with that render appearance. Um, so what I'm going to do is unclick this, and I'm just going to change the color uh, for the shading. So what, what I've just done is changed the color that we should see. All the rain should turn yellow. However, I haven't changed the rendering appendant, uh, um, appearance. So if I render it, it's still going to look black because it's set to black. So let me just go ahead and see if that worked. There you go. So, so all the railings in the project should be yellow at this point, unless, for whatever reason, one of those railings were defined lower on the hierarchy. For example, the type. You can change the type. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that now that we have it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select one of these railings. It really doesn't matter which one you select at this point. Um, and then... <clears throat> Edit properties, type properties, and now from here um, you have to go to rail structure. 
so there, there's certain um, there's certain elements where you have to um, edit the structure. So a lot of times when you go to the uh, type properties, right there it'll have um, the materials section, and you can change the materials directly from there. This is an, an example where this railing is is um, really a bunch of different little pieces, and here you can see that um, they're all um, the material is defined by the category itself. So our category right now um, we have is like what is it black metal or something like that, but we change the color so you can see it as this color. If again for whatever reason this category was blank, um, these would be grayed out. What I'm going to do is somewhat similar to Y2E2, at the top row, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and make it wood. So it's, it's really as easy as just searching for wood. You get all, you get all your options that you have. Um, I'm just going to pick, pick one of these just to show you what's up. Okay, um, so let's, let's move back. So um, what I was doing there is is editing the type of the rail itself. So what I did is select select a rail that I that I want to work with. Um, there you go. Um, and from there, you can either right click uh, to element properties. You can also pick it up from here if you want. So I'm just going to pick it from there. Uh, once you get to here, uh, so what I just did is selected uh, element properties and it took me to instant properties. As you can see, there's no way of changing material or anything on the instance properties. So what I have to do is edit type. Once I get to here, I can edit the real structure. And then it brings up the edit real dialog box. And here is where I can change uh, each individual rail if needed to whatever color you want. You want a rainbow rail, you can get a rainbow rail. Um, okay. So if I press OK. Sorry, can make all of them that would work? Um, you have to, in that real dialog box, you have to go through each one and change them all. Then, I, I'm curious to see if you would some, if you can somehow select them all and then change it, but I don't know if it's, that's actually possible. Um, I mean, you know, actually. Okay, so there you go. Um, but okay, so what we can see here, let me let me exit out real quick. Uh, you can kind of see that there's two different colors here. The top the top railing is made out of wood. These are made out of out of uh, well, they're just they're just yellow color at this point. Um, what happened here is I changed the type. So any type similar to this rail is going to change. As you notice earlier, what I did is selected just this rail. However, the, the, this rail also changed with it. Okay. So again, it's a type. And also, since we had other types of rails, you can see that that you know that top rail didn't change to wood. If I wanted to do that, I'd have to select these individually. Um, I had to select these individually and then go through the process all over again. So, not not too bad. Um. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, they, they basically look identical, right? Um, really, they are two different rails. So in order to see that, if I select this one, um, it's called railing handrail pipe, right? But if I select this this one here, it's called a guard rail. So it's really, they look identical, but they're actually two different types of rails. So, yeah, it's a little confusing. You could, you could. And I, I, um, I know Glenn talked about it, but there is a difference between a guardrail and a rail. I think a guardrail has to be higher. If a rail can be, I, you know, don't call me on this, but maybe three feet high, and then a guardrail has to be three and a half or something like that. So. Uh, same, thing with, uh, same thing with this, this little one here. This is a uh, guardrail pipe top rail only. So the, that was specifically made because you have this wall here, um, and otherwise you would have railing inside of this wall. And to make it uh, more realistic, what they did is just deleted some of these lower rails to get to get that uh, to get that look going. Okay. All right. 
right, so uh, now we know how to change the optic styles, the type properties. Uh, again, it's it's really you know you were kind of investigating on you know where where are these where is this object materials are assigned to you know um, some sometimes um, or most elements don't have um, you can't change the material or instance properties. Um, I'll go through an exercise on on exactly what that means, but more, more often than not, uh, you know, 90%, 99% of the time, any element is going to be able to change its material and the type properties. Okay? And again, if that's not assigned here, then it's going to take the, uh, the, the category, whatever is, whatever is assigned to the actual category. All right, so to, to illustrate how um, one could um, change the material and the instance properties, I'm going to go ahead and modify a family um, so that it has, um, it has a material classification in the instance properties. Um, and it also brings up one more way that you can uh, change a material for an object. And really what it is is uh, it's to edit a, an actual family. So I'm going to go ahead and use this conference table right here. Um, before I do that, let me go ahead and do a, uh, a uh, what is it, a box, box section cut on this view so that we can kind of look into that room. You don't have to do this. You can do it from the outside, but... Okay. So here's our, our conference table. Um, you can see right now it's grouped together um, as one single unit with all the chairs. So um, I, I want to just edit that table itself. So there's a, a couple of ways to do it. I can either go to edit group and that would allow me to go inside of the group itself to edit the table or I can just ungroup uh, the entire group and it'll make all these elements separate. So um, either one's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup at this point. And now I can go ahead and select the table. Okay. Um, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and edit the family. Okay, since we are dealing with materials, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and, and set the, um, in the control, um, the view control bar to set um, the view as either shading or shading edges. Just, you know, we're dealing with materials here, we need to see what it looks like. Okay, so I want to go ahead to demonstrate this. I want to go ahead and make this a, a glass tabletop. It doesn't have to be glass, but I, what I want to do is, is uh, make that top a different material than the rest. So right now there's, there's a couple of, uh, of objects or elements in this property. There's, there's these two legs and then the top. So what I'll do is go ahead and select the top itself, uh, go to element properties, and then instant properties in this case. So right now I have, um, there's, one, there's one place for material, and it just says material, right? So uh, if I open this up, what this shows me is um, there are, there's an associated parameter with this, and it's just one material. So basically what that tells me is, is if, you're, if you're feeling wood, your tabletop has to be wood. If your tabletop is wood, your feet has to, have to be wood. So I want to go ahead and change that. So what, I, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a parameter. Uh, go ahead and name it, um, I don't know, I guess tabletop is probably good. So I think I might just keep this as other for now. But oh, actually, yeah, materials and finishes. I'll go ahead and put it, group it with that. And now I have the option of, of putting it as a type or as an instance. So to again, this was meant to illustrate um, how to change a material in the instance. So we're going to select instance in, at this point. That's okay. Okay. All right. So. So now, um, now, unfortunately, it still won't let you change that 
property. It's still wood at this point, right? Um, I want to see if this works really quick, but I don't think it's going to work. Okay, so I have I have my tabletop selected. Or actually, I don't even need to do that. What, I, what I'm going to do is go to the types now. And what this is going to do is give uh, all the parameters for that. As you can see, the material material finishes, that's the that's what we category, categorize, categorized tabletop as. Um, I have the option now of changing that. Right, so it was cherry wood before, and now let's go ahead and change it to something else. Uh, so glass is perfect. Uh, let's see, so press OK, and there you go. Now we have a glass tabletop. Right. Um, the beauty of, of associating with an instance is um, now that I have now that I have this tabletop, and say for example I have a, a very large office building, many many conference rooms, and the client wants many many different types of uh, tabletops. So they want they want you know a steel and steel one, they want a glass one, they want a wood one. Well, um, what I can do now is I have this this family type. I can bring this into the project and drop it wherever I want to and then select individual uh, instances of that family and change it on the spot. Um, if, I weren't, if I were not to do it that way, what would happen is I would have to create, um, a, I would have to duplicate and edit a family type for every different type of tabletop I want. So you can see how um, this can, can be very powerful um, if, for example, um, you know, you, you have, you have one type of table, but you just want to change the tabletop multiple times throughout the project. So um, this is a way of doing it without having to go and duplicate family type and then, and then um, have, you know, a multiple different family types. Um, you can just do it in one. So right now... No, um, um, so, so the way the way we set it up is, you know, we, we created a parameter and made it an instance parameter. So, um, if I have a bunch of these in the project and I change the instance parameters for one, it's not going to change the rest. Um, Right now, this right here is associated with the type. So if I were, if you know, the same scenario, I have a bunch of them, and I wanted to change my feet, when I change one, the, all the other ones would change, because the only way to change that would be in the type properties. So right now, we're still in the family editor. Um, I wanted to bring it back into the project. Do you want to the whole uh, field Sure. Uh, let's see. Cancel out of this real quick. Um, okay. Oh, before, let's see, I might have, okay, so I already have this open. Um, what I did, um, it's already, well, actually, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from scratch just to show you what's going on. Let's go, to a, let's go to 3D view. Right, here's my tabletop. Well, actually, right now it's 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 back to being grouped. Uh, I'm either going to edit or ungroup. Okay, just select the tabletop. Then go to um, edit family. And uh, stop me if I'm going too fast here. All right, so there's two elements you can select. I'm going to select the tabletop at this point. Oh, okay. So, um, which is kind of important because we're dealing with materials, right? So, if you go to the, um, this is a, I always get this wrong, control V bar, this thing down here. So, this little uh, box. These are the options, whether you want shading, shading with edges, hidden lines, or, uh, or wire, or wire lines. So you can see that's what it was on before. Um, that's not going to really help with determining materials, um, what I have it on there. Later, later versions of Revit um, have another option in there called uh, Realistic, I believe, and that um, that puts on uh, the rendered appearance 
um, it's it's not being rendered, but it puts on the rendered appearance. So um, yeah, so you have that option as well. Uh, okay, so tabletop instant properties. <clears throat> okay, so this is where you can change um, the family parameters. There's only one right now, so I want to add another one at this point. So I'll just add that parameter. Um, so this is where you actually create one. Um, what did I mean at tabletop? Okay, so group parameters, I can keep other, or now I'm just going to go ahead and do materials and finishes, but really, um, that didn't matter. This is a key point. You can either do type or instance. If I keep it with the type, um, you know, I change I change one type, or, or I go, or I go to one table and then change the type, all the other types are going to change. If I do instance, it's going to be for each instance. Okay. And I still have, I still haven't changed that, the material for that tabletop yet. So what I need to do is go to types and this list all the parameters, or the, the parameters for the family. And um, right at the very top, you have tabletop. <coughs> So that's that's where I go ahead and um, I go ahead and change uh, from wood cherry to whatever you, whatever you like. And there we go. And once you once you've actually done that, you can load it back into the project. Um, let's see. Override. Is this, this, okay. So override with existing. And then existing versions, and there you go, those are our tabletop. So to, to illustrate the power of instances again, what I'm going to do is um, uh, copy and paste this. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. You can create similar or just copy and paste. Um, so yeah, I know it's out, it's out in the parking lot, but um, I definitely want to show this to you. So now that I have this one selected, I can go to Element Properties and go to Instance Properties this time. And here under Materials and Finishes, you have Tabletop. Right now it's Glass. If I were to change it to, um, I don't know. I know that doesn't make very much sense, but let's see what happens. So now, now I went ahead and changed it. And it didn't change the original one. So, something to think about. Now, now to, to drive this point home again, I'm going to go ahead and select that same tab uh, table, go to Type Properties. Um, now I have something called Material. I can change that to, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, let's see. Let's just do Glass. Just something different, just to show you what's going on. And you can see how both of those tables change now. The, the feet, the feet of those tables, both of them have changed. So, okay. Okay. Um, lastly, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about uh, paint for materials. Um, the paint tool is a little funny. It can either really hurt you or really help you. Um, the reason I say that is uh, paint doesn't really change the material properties of the object. What it really does is put kind of puts kind of a veneer on a on a face of an object. So um, you know you could potentially go to uh, you know um, you know you're working with a bunch of different people and and you see this wall that happens to be black and you want to change that black wall to something else. So you start you start digging in, you start looking at the instance properties, the, the type properties, you go up and start looking at the category and nowhere in there um, are you seeing um, a black finish on it, right? So um, what, what's going on? Really what's happening is it was painted on. Right. There's no way, if you paint, for example, a wall, there's no way to go into the properties of that wall um, and see that it's been painted. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of that, and that's why it can hurt, because you can spend a lot of time trying to investigate on, it, on how to change that. Um, so, or it can also help you quite a bit. Um, for example, if you, you know, say I had this room and I wanted to accent these two opposite walls with, I don't know, green or something. Um, 
So there's a couple ways to do that. What you can do is you can pick the walls and uh, change them, change the, the uh, type properties of that wall so that it has a green paint finish on the exterior. Another way to do it is as simply as just to picking this, uh, this tool, the paint tool, and painting that wall green. You know, so it can help you or it can hurt you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get rid of this section box. Oh, actually, to do, sorry, to do that, um, view properties. All right. All right, so here's an example of where um, we're going to use the paint tool. Um, this wall right here, the one with the, um, uh, the brick look, this has been painted on. This is not actually brick. It's kind of, it's been painted on. Um, you know, same, same with all these. You can't really see them. There you go. Kind of the brick, brick walls. Those have all been painted on. Okay, so to do that, um, what you need to do is go to the Modify tab. And then under Edit Face, you have a couple of tools, one Split Face and then one's Paint. Uh, paint is the one we're looking at. Uh, I'll explain what Split Face is really quickly, but let's, let's go ahead and pick that tool. And then right here, you have a drop-down box, and it has all the materials in your materials library. So every one of them. Unfortunately, I, I can't, couldn't figure out where to search, so we don't have the search function there. Uh, but if you know what it is, you can quickly scroll down to whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to, let's, let's pick... Uh, I'm going to pick something here, I don't know, something random. Maybe, maybe masonry stone, let's try that. So if I go in here, uh, again, this does surfaces, so it's not going to change everything um, on this, it's just going to change the surface. I went ahead and selected it. For some reason, it's, uh, um, well, and this kind of makes sense, right? Um, I would imagine that the rendered appearance, appearance of this masonry stone has gray in it, so um, it's, so as long, okay, so we can figure that out, hold on just a second, what I'm going to do is go to manage, material, uh, it was masonry, right? Uh, So this is what I just applied. You can see that it's gray colored, so I did paint it correctly. If I go to appearance, right now it's set at generic, all right? So this is why it looks this gray, generic gray color. Um, I can change that if I want to. Um, I'm not going to do that at this point, but, um, but just so you know you can. So what I just did is basically painted that wall. All right. um, say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and go back to where it's not painted. There you go. Say, for example, I only wanted to paint half the wall, right? This is where that, the tool split face comes in. So if I, again, if I go to modify tab, split face, I can, um, at this point, once I select the split face tool, what it's, gonna, what it's asking me to do is to select the face that I want to split. So um, again, I'm going to pick the same face that we were working with. Okay, um, and now what I have is um, the draw uh, palette to draw any shape or divide it in half, whatever I want to do. So, um, I don't know, let me, let me just go ahead and draw a circle. Finish. Okay, so it doesn't look like much now, but... Uh, the benefit of this is, um, you know, for whatever reason, if I wanted that to be a different finish than the rest, what I can do now is go to Modify, Paint. Uh, uh, I want to find an interesting material for you guys, but... Yeah, yeah, no, that's good, that's good. Let's do glass. Because I can... So now if I select that, there you go. 
it's a little, it's a little, so this is a little confusing, right? Because what I just did is just painted one of the surfaces of that wall. For whatever reason, I can see completely through that wall. I would probably say that this is kind of a bug, right, in the system. Um, very, very weird, but just as an example, I'm going to paint, uh, I'm going to paint this wall right here with the same glass. It's a glass now, right? But if I went, if I went up here, let me select it, and I'm going to rotate around, it's obviously not transparent. So, this is just, this is just the, the way the software works, and one of the bugs of the software, so. But you kind of, you know, you kind of get an idea on how paint actually works. So, um, so you might ask, you know, I went ahead and painted all these weird colors in the building. How do I get it back? You know, how do I, how do I scrape the paint off, essentially, right? Um, what you can do is if you go to paint, um, if you go to the very top of the materials, you have you have this thing called by category, and that's that's basically saying I'm going to resort back to what it initially was. All right, so there you go. Or, or for example, we can do this one as well, back to the original. So that's how you get back. Do we have to do them individually? Like, what if we wanted to scrape the paint off of every surface we decided to paint? You do, you do, because. Um, uh, unfortunately, well, the only way I know how to do it is to do them individually. So if you had, if you had five walls and you painted each one black, you, uh, you have to scrape the paint off. Are you going to schedule and make sure you select them all and make sure that that might be yeah, that might be a good way to do it as well. So I mean, another another way. Have two safe versions. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean that would be too cumbersome, I would say, right? But that would definitely work. Um, you know, if you if you have these, if you have, say you have, I don't know, say you have 50 walls and you want to paint them all black at that point, that might be the better way to approach that is to select the wall and change the type, right? And then all you have to do is change one, and they automatically populate. And then you know, again, if you were to change it again, you would only have to change it once. Is that what you did that circle you Yes. So if you select it, um, one thing that's really good is it'll tell you what you selected and it says uh, uh, modify split face. Another way to do that is right here you have the filter. I definitely like to use a filter. Um, and you can see I have one split face um, element selected. Right? Uh, so you, know, you can just delete it basically. So, um, also, which is really interesting, um, so this wall right here, this is one single wall, but you can see two different finishes on it, um, and what was done is there's a, a, a split face line in the middle. If I were to delete this line, it would delete that surface that was painted over there. So that's, 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 pretty, that's another handy way of getting back. So for the same does it matter whether you keep on brick or use brick right from the material? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think we've asked either way. So whatever you feel comfortable doing, you know, I think, I think that's the way I would go. Like we, you know, yeah, we, we didn't, we didn't specify either way. So it's, it's your, your creativity, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. So. Yeah, at least this is like a cross right? What they use this project? Um, as far as painting? Yeah, instead of using that material. Um, well, okay, so you mean as far as the bricks, right? Yeah. So what they, yeah, and, and if you look at it that way, if you want to do, uh, like, material takeoffs, for example, um, this is definitely fudging it, right? You're painting bricks on the outside of the wall, which, in reality, a lot of buildings are built that way, where it's, it's, uh, it's a, um, a stone, uh, a brick from here, which is not really... It's not really made out of brick. It's just, you know, this veneer people slap on a wall to make it look like it's a brick wall, but it's really not, right? So, um, but if you were doing actual quantity takeoffs from it, um, this won't capture that at all. And you're right, it would be fudging it. Like, you wouldn't see any bricks in that quantity takeoff. So, 
it's a, it's a definitely good, a good question. So, you know, if, if you're modeling and you want to get really specific and you're going to use the model for quantum takeoffs, um, painting, painting the outside with bricks and calling it a day is probably So we've talked about how to change uh, uh, the type properties. We gave an example of what instant properties uh, are having materials associated, associated with instant properties can do. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and create a material. So this is a good, a good point to create a material. Let's say, I'm going to go ahead and select this wall right now and change the properties of it, the type properties, to be, to be exact. And if we go to structure, the, the finish, the outside finish of it, right now is, uh, what is it? It's exterior stucco is what we have. So let's go, let's go ahead and change that to something else. Uh, well, we can change this something else, but let's uh, uh, let's create a new material. So I'm going to duplicate that. We'll call it uh, Stucco 2 is fine. Oh, actually, let's, let's shorten this up. It's just easier easier to find for me. Okay, and. You know, I, I can do, I can change the way, let's go ahead and change the way it would, it would render, right? So right now it's in this default stucco tan looking thing. Um, I want to change that. Maybe stucco, you know, I want to stick with stucco, but I definitely don't like this tan stucco. So um, not that aqua stucco would be any better, but uh, actually let's, let's try this one. This one. It's a little weird, but at least you can see what's going on, right? So what I just did is change the render, render appearance for this new stucco to material that I've created. Um, what, I, what I haven't done as far as over here on the graphics, okay, so right now this is clipped, which it says use rendered appearance for shading. Um, and I don't know if I explained this before, but what that does is it looks at the rendered appearance and from that takes the best color that is associated with that rendering appearance and it's going to use that for the shading. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to have it that way. You can also, uh, you know, you can, you can change it, you can have it separate, you can have it different. Um, um, it's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it clicked on. But what you also can do is you can change the pattern that, that it shows outside. So whatever pattern you want, let's pick some funky pattern. <clears throat> also, um, you can change the way the cut pattern looks like. And what that does is if, when you're in uh, a section view, um, you, that wall is going to be cut, right? So whatever thickness that I associate that material with, and I don't think, I've, I don't think it has very much thickness, but um, this is a pattern that's going to show up on that cut. So you can, you know, that's something that you can change as well. Um, these two colors here are associated with the line, the line color itself, not the color that, that it has. So. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK. Uh, okay. Okay, so hopefully, there you go. I have some really funky blue colors going on. And there's actually stripes too associated with that. 
right? And if I were to render it, I should get some some stepo type view. Let's go. Let me do a very quick render here. Just to show you what that would look like. take a long time. That's why, again, I, I, you know, just make sure to start at the very draft level until you're really ready and you're happy with your, with your render. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. So, so this is a new material that we created. 